Good day. This is Jamie of the Druid Diaries. I'm going to tell you a little bit about a project that I'm working on. I have been researching Kelpie lore and I've been going back as far as I can. And if you have any sources uh, that you uh, could put me on to, please do. I think it's a, a wonderful uh, allegory, the story of the Kelpie, and it's important to me. I had a dream about a Kelpie many many years ago when I was very young and I awoke to tell that story to my mother and she was quite frightened by it. She thought, what did you say to it? What did it say to you? Well this has stayed with me and Kelpies have re-emerged as I've been walking the path of Druidry and doing my historical research and finding out more about my own ancestral past. And this I recommend to everyone, wherever you are from and whatever lineages you have. It uh, is a very exciting way to uh, time travel. It's uh, not, it's, yes, it's about your own ancestry, but it's also about the time, the place, the history, the stories, the context, the cultures, the beliefs. And I said time travel, and it is a form of time travel. And as an artist, I believe that art also is a wonderful vehicle for us to time travel with, whether that's written, sculpted, painted, the theater, whatever art form, or letters. Maybe someone found letters in an attic, you know, that were 100 years old, 20 years old. That's a way to time travel to and really full of surprises and interesting things. And even the most mundane things become very special when you uh, have those kinds of experiences. So never <clears throat> sell them short. It's great. So I have been studying these Kelpies with a personal kind of... Uh, connection to that from the dream and that little experience with my mom. However, I've really come to uh, respect them a great deal more and the more I learn, the more multifaceted they become. And this is leading me to explore other types of hippocamps as well. And that led me to the Pictish seahorses that I saw in photographs online that were juxtaposed facing one another with little tiny bridles on, which really captured my imagination. And I didn't know that uh, these seahorses might actually represent two kings who were brothers that fought. I have to find out more about that story. It's really interesting. And, you know, I'm finding myself as yet not really digging for it and just pondering, well, why were they fighting? You know, was it religion? That was the one of the first ones that came to mind. Was one pagan and one converted to being a Christian? Oh, no, you know, that's breaking up the family again. So, interestingly, uh, one of the images, the first one, no, second one that I saw, um, is of the two with their little bridles on, but there is a Christian cross. So I'm not sure. Maybe you have some interpretations. Maybe you can tell me more about that. Well, I liberated them from their bridles and created little Raku sculptures of them, and I've done three so far. I have another one on the go that has more of the, the seahorse S curve in it, more of its body raising up and the tail coming up out of the water. I use with my Kelpies and my seahorses, I use empty space, negative space to express the presence of the water and I've only actually done one where I've used the clay as a presence for the water. There might be more, I don't know, we haven't seen fully where this is going to go. I'm exploring. So I'll show you first the Kelpie, uh, not the Kelpies, the seahorse brothers and how they turned out in the Raku. And it, it doesn't get past me that I, a Canadian artist, uh, relatively uh, new to Canada in the sense of my family tree, but still Canadian of mainly Scottish, uh, British, we'll say British descent. Sorry, guys, I'm not going to be too specific right this moment. But, uh, you know, using a Japanese technique to... Uh, bring forth these Pictish uh, seahorses, seahorse kings. So I hope you find them interesting. I have moved their bodies around. They aren't uh, 
completely in the same position that they are in the stones though I do want to uh, take that oops I'm just going to travel over here there with my acorns and I have a little um, copper pot full of acorns here there they are so you can see them in the, the uh, composition on the stones they are facing off together but their heads are down and their legs and feet are similar but they are of the same type of composition and you can see the beautiful colors from the Raku glazes. Raku's are really elemental almost well it's like an alchemy of, of uh, actual fire and water and earth the ceramic the clay and it's a very exciting uh, method you have the same long approach of sculpting it out of clay letting that clay dry to what we call bone dry then firing it at a kiln in what we call a bisque a bisque firing and then taking that and painting on your glazes and then putting it into the glaze firing now you don't have to have that intermediary firing it's just that it makes the clay transition to something more solid and porous and less fragile you can glaze clay that has not been fired in a kiln and then fire it but you are also taking more chances with uh, potential breaking and oversaturating but that is too also a very beautiful method of just uh, creating drying glazing firing that's it that's one way it's quite uh, a beautiful way it's very immediate and it saves on resources too however it's a chancy one with uh, this type of firing as opposed to the normal glaze firing that I would do we take the lid off the kiln while it's still quite blazing hot normally we would let the kiln cool off quite a bit before opening that lid and for the regular clays that I use if we were to do what we did with these uh, kelpies here there's a very good chance that the clay would crack from shock and the piece might break but this clay for raku is uh, created it's it's uh, like a recipe uh, in a way that makes it a little bit more shock proof it's able to transition between the hot and cold more easily without breaking hopefully there's no guarantee 100 percent but it does a lot better so when these sculptures came out of the kiln they were being held in iron clasps and they were taken red hot and put in a bucket of combustibles which of course caught fire in their case it was recycled the paper shreds I wanted to have um, some kind of aquatic plants that is something that could happen in the future uh, there were a few iris, I think they were iris uh, leaves that someone donated. I don't think they were bulrush leaves. That was another possibility as well. So I may be collecting over time some different plants that might seem more appropriate for these fellows. Now then, after burning and settling down for about 20 minutes, they were taken and put in a bucket of water, which... Uh, <clears throat> really steamed <laughs> but not as much as I've seen it steam for some work these were small they are small I should say and they didn't uh, create as much heat and by the time I got my fellows into the water it was already warming up so there wasn't that much cold I think after having this work successfully I might give that another shot and try for a colder water and see if that makes any difference now here's the larger one and I have to say I'm really pleased with these guys you know they really have energy and personality and there is a life to them and it really feels to me that they do connect with the kelpies on this uh, not kelpies pardon me uh, the seahorses on the Pictish stones and it's inspired me to learn even more about about these seahorses why they are on the, the particular stones that they are on uh, 
and the story of these brothers, if that really is the case, that they symbolize these two brothers that uh, came to war upon one another so suddenly. Um, you know, that's important to me, not only because I love history, I love art, I love these messages that come through to us from the past in the things that we as human beings have made, but because one of my grandmothers claimed Pictish descent, and I want to know that story as best as I can in this uh, time that we live in. So, I hope um, these fellows with their acorns have inspired you as well to look into the Pictish stones to try and uh, find some understanding of uh, the past and of the people that have gone before us. They are human beings too. And sometimes it upsets me the way the Picts are portrayed, just as it uh, has upset me about how the indigenous First Nations of North America have often been portrayed sort of as savages and uncultured and cruel. And uh, of course, this is just not a story I'm willing to buy into for any of these peoples. People of the past are much like us, you know, they, they, they love, they live, they fear, they laugh, they cry, they cared, and they survived. So they have stories. And I think it's important to respect them as living beings and their achievements of survival. Our, our lineages, for those of us are, are, who are here in this world right now, if there wasn't a little more to our ancestors, we wouldn't be here. They, we represent survival. All of us who are alive today, we represent a line of survival, love, passion, and history. However humble we um, may be in our lives, in our positions in society, and likewise our ancestors, I feel it's a real triumph of nature to exist in this world. And to be able to have the privileges to see and experience objects and imagery from the past is very special. Uh, if any of you have ever been uh, exposed to an archaeological dig or have sat with someone listening to uh, stories, ancient stories, uh, have taken a moment and had the privilege of experiencing an ancient instrument being used. These are really gifts. It's not um, excluding ourselves from the present. And it's not uh, a way to escape the present, although it can really comfort us. I think it's really a lesson. It's a reminder, you know, that there is a kind of universal connection that runs through all humanity and throughout all time. And it will continue as long as we continue. And it's important to respect the past, the present, and the future in the now, which is every moment that you experience. So, I am going to make it a point to learn more about these Seahorse Brothers and explore their images more fully. And I'll get back to you on that because I might find something really interesting and worth sharing with you. So thank you for your time. I have some other things to say today, but I'm going to do it on a, a separate little video. Thanks. Have a wonderful day.